see many Christians, I mean, I know Christians that, that weep reading their Bible, that really believe in their Bible and deeply. And and I'll never forget, I was at a, a conference where they had a Muslim who was doing a thing about the Bible, and he just made fun of Christianity for about an hour in a lecture. And I was in the audience, and I brought my father and my brother, and I, it was unfortunate. But he, he made fun of Christianity for about an hour. And then what broke my heart is a woman got up, and she just started, she literally was shivering. But she just said, you know, I was a Christian, a Baptist, and the thing I didn't like about Baptists is that they always made fun of other religions. And I came here tonight thinking maybe Islam had something for me. But you're just doing the exact same thing that really uh, sent me away from. Yeah, you know, it's just amazing. We don't think about that, you know. And, and then again, that gets back to sadda dharaya, you know, that you can cause people to reject Islam. You can be the cause for people rejecting Islam. Who's going to be answerable on Yom Qiyamah? Because the Prophet said, "Ana khasmu man ada dhimiyan." I will be the advocate of a dhimmi who is wronged by a Muslim on the Day of Judgment. The pro- now, if you've got the Prophet as your lawyer, you think you're going to lose that case? Seriously. If you have the Prophet as your advocate, on the but he's going to be against the Muslim, supporting the case of the Vimmi, who was unjustly wrong, because that could be a reason why he rejected Islam. Thinking that that was Islam. So it's, I think it's very important that we, we hold to our guns. Like Sheikh Abdullah said today, you know, we have a religion, we have a creed, we believe in this creed, and we do believe that Islam superseded. That's what I was taught. That's in the aqidah of the Muslims, that Islam, al-shari'atu tansakhu, al-shari'a lati kanat qablaha. It's in Jawharat al-Tawheed. And, uh, and it's what was, has been taught. So I'm not a perennialist. I don't, you know, adhere to that philosophy that all these religions are still valid. But I do believe that there is a validity in those religions. And then to the degree with which that validity is there, Allah maintains and sustains people through it. I do believe that. I think they get spiritual help from it, spiritual aid when they're sick, when they pray, when they do these things, because we have a generous Lord. And uh, until something better comes along, um, that is what God has given them. You know, I mean, my mother, when I was 12 years old, told me that the only reason that you go to Orthodox Church is because your grandfather's Orthodox. She said, if you were born in Sri Lanka, you'd be a Buddhist right now. So this is a purely arbitrary situation. And I never forgot that. Because that's 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 the way she saw it, you know. That the the world's a big place, and there's a lot of people on this planet, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on out there, and people are doing a lot of weird things. Muslims are doing a lot of weird things, seriously. Even some of the rituals and practices, and, and we have we have honor killings, and people think that has something to do with their religion. I and mean, we've, you know, we're a mess. So there's, you know, there's a lot of problems out there, and and uh, I don't think we contribute to alleviating them or removing them by denigrating others. And one of the things that I heard from Sidi Abu Bakr, which I really appreciated, he said, when you when you denigrate other religions, you are not elevating your own religion, but you are succumbing to spiritual arrogance which is one of the most dangerous states for a human being to be in. And, and I really appreciated that statement. So I'll just repeat it. When you denigrate other religions, you are not elevating your own religion, but you are succumbing to spiritual arrogance.